हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे माय टॉपिक इज मोबाइल एडोक नेटवर्क इट इज़ अ पार्ट ऑफ मोबाइल कम्युनिकेशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू नो दैट व्हाट इज मोबाइल एडोक नेटवर्क अ मोबाइल एडोक नेटवर्क इज अ कलेक्शन ऑफ वायरलेस मोबाइल होस्ट फॉर्मिंग अ टेम्प्ररी नेटवर्क विदाउट एनी सेंट्रलाइज एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन और स्टैंडर्ड सपोर्ट सर्विस अ वायरलेस एडोक नेटवर्क इज अ डिसेंट्रलाइज टाइप ऑफ वायरलेस नेटवर्क The network is ad hoc because it doesn't rely on a pre-existing infrastructure such as routers in wired network or access points in managed wireless network. In previous networks, uh, when we have to connect two devices, then we need to know uh, a particular middleware which is a access point. Now, in ad hoc network, we connect two devices directly. so it is known as a infrastructure less now in this diagram we have a several devices which are connected directly uh, and they send data from source to destination so to transmit the data we have to know that what is routing because routing is used to send the data so routing is the process of selecting paths in a network along which to send data packets on ad hoc network routing protocol is a convention or a standard that controls how nodes decide which way to route packet between computing devices in a mobile ad hoc network routing is needed to find path between source and destination and forward the packets appropriately in wireless network using a infrastructure cells or any other things the packets uh, are transmitted within a cell the base station can reach all mobile nodes without routing via a broadcast in the case of ad hoc network each node must be able to forward data for other node so here we have an example in this example we have five nodes n1 to n5 are connecting depending on the current transmission characteristics between them in this snapshot of the network n4 can receive n1 over good link but n1 receive n4 only via weak link links do not necessarily have the same characteristics in both directions the reason for this are different antenna characteristics or transmit power n1 cannot receive n2 at all and to receive a signal from n1 now this situation can change quite fast as the snapshot at t2 shows n1 cannot receive n4 any longer n4 receive n1 only via weak link but now n1 has an asymmetric but bidirectional link to n2 that didn't exist before this very simple example already shows some fundamental differences between wired network and ad hoc wireless network related to routing so these are the fundamentals first one is asymmetric link for example node a receive a signal from node b but this doesn't tell us anything about the quality of the connection in reverse we might receive nothing has a weak link or even have a better link than the reverse direction routing information collected for one direction is of almost no use for the other direction however many routing algorithm for wired network rely on a symmetric scenario now second one is a redundant link wireless network to have redundant link to survive link failure however there is only some redundancy in wireless or wired network which nobody controls redundancy so there might be many redundant link up to the extreme of a completely mesh topology now the third one is interference in wired wired network links exist only where a wire exists and connections are planned by network administrator 
Now, fourth one is a dynamic topology. The greatest problem for routing arises from the highly dynamic topology. The mobile nodes might move as shown in the above figure or a medium characteristics might change. This results in a frequent changes in topology. So snapshots are valid only for a very short period of time. In ad hoc network, routing tables must somehow reflect these frequent changes in topology. And routing algorithm have to be adapted. Routing algorithm used in wired network would either react much too slowly or generate too many updates to reflect all changes in topology. Now, we have a destination sequence routing. There are two different routing top techniques in a ad hoc network. First one is a DSDV and second one is a DSR. So, we have first one that distance sequence vector routing. So, it is an enhancement to dis distance vector routing for ad hoc network. DSTV can be considered historically, however, an on demand version. Each node exchange its neighbor table periodically with its neighbor, change it one node in the network propagates slowly. Through the network, the strategies to avoid this problem which are used in a fixed network do not help in the case of wireless ad hoc network. Due to the rapidly changing topology, this might create loops or unreachable regions within the network. So here we have a diagram in which several nodes are present. S is the source node and D is the destination node. Now we have to transmit the data from source to destination and every node contains the information about another node. Hence as a destination, next to hope, metric, sequence number and a install time. Now DSCV now adds two things to the distance vector algorithm. First one is a sequence number and second one is a damping. So what is a sequence number? Each routing advertisements comes with a sequence number within ad hoc network. Advertisements may propagate along many paths. Sequence number helps to apply the advertisement in correct order. The, uh, this avoids the loops that are likely with the unchanged distance vector algorithm. Now, damping. Uh, transient changes in topology that are of short duration should not disabilize. The routing mechanisms. Advertisement containing changes in the topology currently stored are therefore not disseminated further. A node waits with dissemination if these changes are probably unstable. Waiting time depends on the time between the first and the best announcement of a path certain distance. Now second algorithm is a dynamic source routing. Imagine uh, what happens in ad hoc network where nodes exchange packets from time to time. The network is only lightly loaded the DSTV or one of the additional distance vector or link state algorithm is used for updating routing tables. Although only some user data has to be transmitted, the node exchange routing information to keep track of the topology. This algorithm maintains routes between all nodes, although there may currently be no data exchange at all. This causes unnecessarily traffic and prevents nodes from saving battery power. So now the second separate problem of dynamic source routing is route maintenance. If a node is continuously sending packets via a route, it has to make sure that the route it held upright. So as soon as a node detects problem with the current route, it has to find an alternative. The basic principle of 
Source routing is also used in a fixed network. Example, token rings. Dynamic source routing is in eliminates all periodic routing updates and work as follows. If a node needs to discover a route, it broadcasts a route request with a unique identifier and the destination address. As parameter, any node that receives a route request does the following things. First, if the node has already received the request which is identified by using a unique identifier, it drops the request packet. And if the node recognizes its own address as the destination, the request has reached its target. Otherwise, the node appends its own address to a list of travels hoped in a packet and broadcast this update route request. Using this approach, the route request collects a list of addresses representing a possible path on its way toward the destination. As soon as the request reaches to the destination, it can return the request packet containing the list to the receiver. Using this list in reverse order, one condition for this is that the links work bidirectionally. If this is not the case and the destination nodes does not currently maintain a route back to the initiator of the request. It has to start a route discovery by itself. The destination may receive several lists containing different paths from the initiator. It could return the best path, the first path or several paths to offer the initiator a choice. So these are applying for a discovery in a source routing algorithm. So I have explained the whole brief discussion of a mobile ad hoc network and algorithm of it. So thank you for watching.